Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my chat. Sorry, I'm sure I plugged the microphone in so you can hear me. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be a very silent talk. Um, this is episode number 559, and the topic today is breaking up a vital time for self love or vital time to love yourself. And I want to speak to this because. One, because I had a conversation with a friend today, and two, because it's starting to become something I'm noticing is happening a lot. But before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women, high-achieving women, in fact, create more balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, and every day now for, well, it's been over two years since I started, but certainly for the majority of that two years, I've done these daily talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And so right now we're at episode number 559. So just a few of these have gone by. And the topic today is really around the idea about loving yourself in challenging situations. Because many people, um, I would say during breakup time, especially when they have a relationship that falls apart, is the last thing they look at doing is loving themselves. When people go through breakups, they're usually in a place of darkness, pain, suffering, loathing, self-loathing, resentment, judgment, all of this lovely stuff. And the last thing they want to do is love themselves. Because somehow there's a rule they're running in their heads that when you are the one, well, no, let me say this, when you're the one that's been broken up with, you must suffer because you were the victim and therefore you should feel bad about yourself and a bad about situation and judge and blame and feel hard done by and all that sort of stuff, which frankly is inaccurate. But I'll get to that in a second. Now, if you're the one doing the breaking up, this is also an interesting time because if you're the, I'm going to say, the breaky and the breaker, I don't know if I say this in the right ways, but the one who is causing the breakup, there's definitely a, um, a tendency just to move on. Oftentimes for people who are the ones who do the breaking up, I'm going to single word to cover that, the um, disruptor, I don't know, I'm not sure if there's a word for that, maybe you can come up with one if you're watching this and you can interact a little bit. But the truth is when people break up, if they're always doing the breaking up, quite often they focus on moving on to somebody else. They don't take stock of themselves. So both sides of the conversation be the victim, the victim, be the one who feels like the victim, who was broken up with, and the one who did the breaking up, who may be the victor. I don't know, again, these terms aren't fitting right. Either one of those two may be in the place where they're forgetting the vital key, which is when you're in a place where you're out of alignment, because both pieces of people are out of alignment, to be honest, getting back to center, loving yourself, Honoring and respecting who you are is perhaps the biggest key to your healing, to your re resurrection, interesting word, and your being aligned to yourself. Because for many people, it's like next, 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 move on, move on, move on. Or if you again, if you're the one who suffered the loss by being broken up with, then you've got to go back into your cave and you've got to fight the wounds and, and arrows and feel distressed and upset and broken down. The reality is, the reality is in both places, applying loving to yourself, being self-centered, yes, self-centered, not egotistical, but self-centered enough to let yourself receive from your own love and overflow. For many people, being in a place of the victimhood for being broken up with is a place where love is most um, absent, it's most, um, what's the word looking for? Um, there's a word, um, scarce, that's the word, scarce, that's the word. And the truth is when that happens, we keep thinking there's no love out there, so I don't feel loved. And frankly, it's like ignoring the fact you're sitting on the gold mine yourself, you know? It's like, you feel like you're, you, feel, you know, you might be, you see, imagine you're sitting on a gold mine thinking you're broke. The same thing is true with love. Now, most of you are not sitting on gold mines, that's a metaphor, I guess. But if you're someone who has been thinking that the love is always out there, and especially when you've been broken up with, you feel like the love's been ripped away from you and stolen, taken away, um, evacuated, just, just totally taken away from you so you don't have it. The mistake you think, you make some mistake is that you believe that's true. It's not. The love that's inside of all of us cannot, is not, ain't possible to be taken away from us. We can share it with other people, but the thing about love, which is one of the most... Um, Ignored facts is that it's a never ending supply within us. We are, and it's gonna sound crazy, but it's true, we are a 
a, a, an endless source of love within us. You may have noticed this when you're around pets or you are in a loving relationship or around kids. There seems to be no end of the amount of love you can bestow and give and share. Well, where do you think that comes from? It comes from inside of you. Now, this is the thing. Coming from inside of you means one very simple thing. You can also tap into it. It's this thing where we keep thinking we should give to other people when we don't allow to receive from ourselves. We think we need to receive from other people. There's something very selfish, apparently, that if we give to ourselves, we're somehow cheating the system, that we should only give to other people. And so we can only receive from other people as well, which makes us a victim. This is, I talked about this yesterday, about the codependent victim mindset that we fall into the trap of when we are living based on somebody else's values or letting somebody else define our um, freedom, happiness, joy, love, all those things. And if you're watching my broadcast, you know I'm very much about stamping out codependence on this planet, which is a big mission, I know. But the more I spread this message, the more you can help me with this. <laughs> because largely speaking, codependence is a trap that we fall into because we've been taught that by society. And because of that codependent paradigm that we've been trained into, not necessarily overtly, but subconsciously, the idea of loving ourselves is somehow wrong. And I'm here to say that loving yourself first is absolutely right. Because two things happen, actually more than two, but it's two to start with. First of all, when you love yourself, you don't sit in the victim place. Hi Lisa, nice to have you join me. Oh, by the way, Facebook Live first. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're wondering who I'm talking to, there's people commenting on my Facebook Live. So, hi Lisa, nice to meet you, nice to see you. So, two things happen, self-love. When you love yourself first, first of all, when things happen that aren't in alignment with you, and you break, someone breaks up with you, or you feel distraught, distressed, you can tap into the love and start refueling yourself. It's something like tapping in and getting your juice back. But you can do it anytime you want without any appointment, without any planning, without any um, commitment. You can do it in five minutes. I mean, the self-love practice, which I'll put the link in the comments, of course. My self-love meditation practice that I, that I share, it takes five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. That's not a lot of time. You don't spend hours doing it. Just tweaking that, tuning that can work. Now, that's the first thing. The second thing, though, is when you love yourself, and this is the key if you want to have a healthy relationship, by the way, hint, hint. If you are someone who is wanting to have more joyful relationships, more expressive relationships, more loving relationships, and don't we all? Loving yourself, as weird as it sounds, is one of the best tools to provide that for you. When you love yourself enough, you love other people abundantly. You love your partner joyfully. You are immersing yourself in an amazing relationship of depth, of connection, of intimacy, of joy, of celebration, and all these things, because it starts from the love inside of you. Self-love is one of the most overlooked and yet fundamental keys to healthy relationships with yourself, with other people, and with everybody. So with this time of the year being the holidays, I just had this sudden thoughts as I've seen um, Christmas decorations at a corner of my eye, which isn't here, I'm, not, I'm imagining because there's nothing in the room here um, at the moment. The self-love sorry at this, this time of year being the holiday time there's such a, a um, focus on giving gifts and presents and sharing and being joyful and merry and all that sort of stuff but a lot of people also get lonely over the holidays so for those people if you know somebody who's watching who is um, I'm glad you do Lisa um, I just saw your comments or I missed the comments for a second there let me back up a second around this time of year being such a time to give and to express and to be joyful sometimes we forget that loving doesn't require it to come from somebody else so when we get don't get the gift we want or the person we give the gift who doesn't like what we gave them we can start judging ourselves and feeling less than well here's a key love yourself first i mean i'm gonna make this pedantic i know and i'm gonna make this very clear and i will put the link in the comments as i said before i have i have a guided self-love meditation practice that i have on my website i'll put the link in the comments because if you are needing practice and most of us do, if you are needing to connect back in, if you're feeling like more love would help you, I recommend this highly. And it's just in time for the holidays, so there. Um, but the holiday time is also a time for a lot of people who are challenged. Around the holiday time can be very depressing for people because maybe they're not near their loved ones or they are in a post-breakup of a relationship right before the holidays. And to be totally transparent, I went through one of those years and years ago where I actually broke up on Christmas Day. So yeah, I did that. Not pretty, I know, and I was so naive and so unaware at the time. But it happened anyway. Anyway, so <laughs> I didn't know what else I was going to tell you that, but okay, I've done that. So I'm not perfect to this by any stretch of the imagination, but I've been studying this for a long time, which is why I've got enough 
content and sharing and inspiration and programs and gifts and coaching and books and all sorts of stuff because I've been learning how to do this right. And most of the time I'm learning how to do it right by helping other people. So you help me when I help you. So the self-love practice, which I was sharing about for last year and actually this, most of this year and then created a program from it, which is a, a practice from it because it's so fundamentally easy when you do it. The key is doing it. Practicing self-love as a daily habit. And that's why it's 30 day practice because it takes about 30 days to train a train new habit. If you do this every day for 30 days, so you start now by the middle of January, your new year will be a whole new paradigm because the self-love fueling that you've done for yourself, refueling, filling up the tanks, feeling more uplifted and connected to who you are, will absolutely change your life, change your relationships, and change your outlook. Again, the trap we fall into of being caught up in thinking we have gotta be loved by somebody else means that when they're not around, we don't feel loved, and that's a lie. When we feel that the person who's loving us doesn't do it the right way, so we don't feel loved. That's a lie. When we feel that if the person we're with, we're with would change just enough so we could love them properly and that would make us feel more loved by them, that's a lie. The reality is clear. Self-love it overrides all of this. And when we love ourselves, when we truly honor, respect and love who we are, however you do that, the program I offer, I mean the practice I offer is a great way of doing it. It could be just the fact you go dancing every night or you eat very carefully, or you exercise every day, you go running, you go cycling, you do service work, things that do you do that build up your self-love muscles are great things to do. I have to think that if you do any and all of those, you're actually ahead of the game. But practicing self-love as a daily practice, and you do it every day, you will change your life, change your relationships, and change your self-image. And if you have challenges time around the holidays, especially if you have a challenge time around the holidays, this is, I would say, the best time to practice, to connect, to love yourself, so that when you come out the other side of the holidays, it's as if you had the best Christmas gift ever. I think I've made this point clear enough. A couple other quick points I wanna say on the back of this. When you're in a relationship, if you're not at a point of breakup, the self-love message, message I'm giving you will raise the bar in your relationship you already have. It will raise the standard of the love you already have. It will also transform your relationship with your partner. So if you're not already doing some sort of self-love practice, whether it's mine or somebody else's, if you're in a relationship, I highly recommend it because your partner will absolutely love you for it. And that's a benefit, not a replacement. <laughs> I think you get my point. And one other thing I wanna say, which is coming up somewhere in the time, ah oh, yes. Because this is a very um, interesting time of the year, being the holiday season, to spend time around other people who may be less um, well off than yourself, to share love with them, is a gift that keeps on giving. This is a time where a lot of people are missing their connection, missing their love, missing their friendships, missing their circle. Maybe they're people who have suffered through stuff this year. Right now, with what happened with the fires in this, in this part of the world, a lot of people have actually lost their homes, so they may be in temporary shelters, or they may be trying to just get the iPad together. If you just share love with them, you might just make their day. So I'm a practitioner of, a teacher of, and a um, inspirational messenger of love, as you may have guessed. So that's why I'm very passionate about these talks. So hopefully this has given you some th food for thought, and maybe some action steps you can take. Again, I'll put the link in the comments for my, my uh, self-love practice, because it will help if you don't have some practice of your own. And I hope that you take this to heart. Whether you're single, or you're breaking up, or you're in a relationship, the more love you give from yourself to yourself, the more love you can receive, the more love you can give. And with that, everybody wins. I thank you for watching. Your homework, by the way, I'm gonna give you homework, yes, is to consider what I said. How much more can you love? How much are you not loving yet We can love more than you already do? Those are your homework assignments, because if you answer those questions honestly, then it's time to do the homework, which is then add more love express more love, feel more love. And that is your homework. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. As I mentioned earlier, it's gone to YouTube. I'll give you the links in a moment. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time because that seems to be the right time of day to do it. It was during the summer. Now it's getting dark. I have to use studio, studio lighting, but it works. Um, so back in tomorrow at this time. My broadcasts go up my Facebook business page after I, after I share them. They get replayed there on barryselby.author on Facebook. They also go onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby dot, sorry, is Barry Selby's the channel on YouTube, 
The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. You can watch all of them there if you wish. And also go into my podcast, which is on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine as well. And by the way, subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my podcast if you wish, and you can download the audio versions there. Um, I was going to say, that I think is it. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions or comments, you want to, you can put them in the comments below and I'll respond afterwards. And if you want to share with anybody you know, maybe going through some challenges or maybe going through some um, experiences, please share it with them. With that, I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye. You're very welcome, Lisa. Thank you. All right. I'll see you later. Take care.